So now we'll move to uh, our final speaker in this, on this example, which is Miguel Rios, and he's the Agricultural Enforcement Coordinator for the Southeast region of the United States Department of Labor. Miguel, over to you. It is quite an honor to be sitting up here uh, with these fine people, and it is an honor to have been here all week. Um, it's quite an experience uh, to hear. It's obviously, as you can probably tell by now, my first forum. Um, but it is quite an experience to hear uh, and, and really take in the, the struggles that, that people are, are having to deal with on an international level. Um, I myself deal on a domestic level, which is pretty much what we're all talking about here. Uh, but the similarities are, are incredible. Uh, from our domestic issues to our international issues. Um, and I hope that you can garner some, some realizations here that there's, there are results and, and there are answers. Um, and I think the program that, that Greg's group has been able to put together along with, and here's the very important part, along with the collaboration with companies such as Cheryl is, is the ultimate answer. Honestly, uh, it's scalable and it can be applied in so many different ways and uh, on an international level as well. So thank you again for the opportunity. There are some unique capabilities that the federal government brings to this work. I, I work for the U.S. Department of Labor. I am the enforcement coordinator for the Southeast United States when it comes to agricultural investigations. There is no question that we have some unique capabilities in all facets of labor, from enforcing wage laws, to investigating workplace harassment and discrimination, to ensuring that employers and employees recognize and adhere to the rules of collective bargaining. The Wage and Hour Division of the U.S. Department of Labor's mission is to promote and achieve compliance with labor standards to protect and enhance the welfare of the nation's workforce. In agriculture, the division's mission statement takes on a deeper meaning and, and really leads wage and hour investigators into darker areas of noncompliance, whether it's deplorable employer-provided housing, unsafe transportation of workers, gross underpayment of wages, or the misrepresentation of working conditions. The challenges that are present in agriculture are difficult to meet and surpass, but the division is more committed than ever to improving working conditions for agricultural workers. And thanks to a surge in social responsibility awareness, retailers and other large corporations with any type of relationship with the agricultural industry are becoming more involved in the welfare of those truly at the bottom rung of the ladder. Of course, much of this involvement by corporations is due to the groundbreaking work of the Coalition of Immokalee Workers. Through the Fair Labor Standards Act, the Migrant and Seasonal Agricultural Worker Protection Act, as well as other laws, the Wage and Hour Division has broad authority over agricultural employers and the working conditions of their employees. The division conducts thorough investigations of employers at all levels of the agricultural supply chain to ensure compliance with labor laws. There are a number of enforcement tools available to the division, from sanctions such as civil money penalties, to revoking licenses of non-compliant farm labor contractors, to debarment from guest worker programs. The division seeks to level the playing field for all those involved while maximizing protection for the workers. But the challenges are many, and even in the U.S., our resources are few. Supply chains are multi-layered, and the ever-increasing outsourcing of services at all levels, what we refer to as fissuring of the workplace, makes enforcement all the more difficult. As labor is performed by those further and further removed from the beneficiaries of that labor, identifying responsible parties and holding them accountable becomes more challenging. So, the division has increased as enforcement activities, including increasing the number of investigators, increasing the numbers of agency-initiated investigations in low-wage industries, including agriculture, of course, and increasing the use of enforcement tools to increase compliance to keep farm workers safer on the job. 
We conducted more than 1,400 investigations in agriculture alone in 2014. And we found more than $4.5 million in back wages for more than 12,000 workers. We also assessed over $3 million in civil money penalties during investigation of, agri of agricultural employers. Now, we are implementing a more strategic approach to enforcement. It requires us to use our limited resources so that they have the largest possible impact on improving compliance as broadly as possible in this environment. Since we will never have the resources to investigate every employer directly or to provide outreach education to every stakeholder, our efforts need to create ripple effects that impact compliance far beyond the workplaces where we physically conduct investigations or the organizations to which we provide outreach directly. If this sounds familiar, we need not look any further than the CIW's successful efforts in bringing about change in the tomato fields of South Florida and now beyond. They have capitalized on the ripple effect model by establishing consequences for noncompliance that have an effect all the way to the top retailers in the U.S. and back. The Division Strategic Enforcement Initiative parallels this model by establishing collaborative arrangements and agreements with lead businesses whereby they take a deeper role in ensuring compliance throughout their supply chains and establish consequences such as the loss of purchasing contracts. Establishing comprehensive outreach and compliance assistance programs along with well-defined monitoring efforts by not only lead businesses but by the Wage and Hour Division itself is the keystone of strategic enforcement and it is the Division's goal to proactively seek and establish such collaborative arrangements throughout the agricultural community. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Miguel. Again, just amazing to hear. I mean, it's quite thrilling, to be honest, to be able to hear these, uh, these successes and to hear the way in which there's collaboration between the three uh, actors.